Hi and welcome back to Cheeky Crypto. My name is Nick and today guys we're going to be jumping down into the world of VeChain, taking a look at the most recent price action on the one hour, one day, one week time frames and giving my thoughts and opinions on where I think things are heading. As I get into this video, if you find it useful and informative, smash that like button. I do appreciate that. If you are new to the channel, then why not go ahead and subscribe, tap the bell, select all the notifications and in doing so, you will be kept up to date with everything that we do here at Cheeky Crypto. And if you haven't yet joined us in Discord, what are you waiting for? Check it out, linked in the description description down below. If you are watching this on X, then do me a solid favor and make sure you are following us and give us a re-X, if that's the right terminology, I don't know, or a retweet, however we're going to want to articulate it, because um, that really does help push the content out to more like-minded individuals. So why not go ahead and do that? Let's uh, let's jump right down into today's video, though. Let's kick things off with our one-hour time frame. So here we have VeChain paired up with USDT. We're actually on the mixed contract using BitGet one hour time frame. I keep talking to BitGet every time and every opportunity I get because I would like to see VeChain on the spot exchange, not just on the futures. Um, but, you know, for now, this is what we've got. Hopefully one day they'll get VeChain's VET token listed on spot because that would be absolutely epic. And uh, you can obviously let them know how enthused you are about that potential in the comment section down below. Um, but let's go ahead and take a look, right? So we can see that we did have this big move to the downside following the rest of the crypto market. Um, from this particular angle here, uh, we can... Um, actually, we should have uh, a few additional things. I must have accidentally removed... Uh, the smart money concepts from here, but uh, we'll come back to that in a moment. Um, so if, yeah, for the most part, as we can see, we're below the 50 EMA, uh, we're below the 200 EMA. So things are not looking overly positive on price action for VET. We obviously hit our higher expectations at 1.877 to 1.901. Uh, we hit this very briefly here. And if I zoom in, you can kind of see it barely really tapped into it. It's just that little wick right there uh, coming in on a higher 1.880. Um, and then we got rejected. So, you know, we hit the Elliott Wave Theory high expectations um, you know, for the C Wave. And then we start to see this big move to the downside. Now, what's really interesting to me about these moves to the downside, if we zoom out a little ways, you can see that we had the five wave drop over here. And if we have five waves to start with, we must end in five waves. We, yet we hadn't seen any of that. We had all these corrections coming down here. We had this bounce up and then we see this big drop to the downside. So I'm going to kind of summarize this on a daily time frame in a moment, but it's good to note that we have this kind of five wave structure, this bounce up, this kind of really choppy sideways move here, bounce up and then push back down. This is really important. Now, in terms of our structures where they have been pulled down here, we can see some really interesting patterns in data. To me, it looks like we have a little wave one up here for a wave two. We then see another one, two, three coming down, but we have yet, yet kind of seen a fifth wave movement to the downside. It actually looks like a very extreme wave four here uh, at the moment. So let me show you what I mean. It, to me, it looks like we've gone down into a wave one up for a wave two down into a wave three, up into a wave four, and then we're looking for that wave five down, okay? Um, and that's really important because it can actually tell us that our targeted range to the downside is actually quite deep because the higher that wave four goes, the lower that wave um, five must go, right? And our target range would be down here, essentially at the 0 0.01348 to a little bit on the higher side uh, at 1.410. Okay, so if I go ahead and remove our um, Fibonacci retracement tool, and then we take a look at that first five wave move, and we have a look at this one here, for example. So ultimately, the way I look at this, and we'll probably leave some of this for the larger time frame, um, but I would be looking at this as a diagonal pattern over here, considering how corrective the internal workings are. Moving this over to our C wave high at 1.8080 right here. And you can see that the 1.618 has narrowly been missed at the moment. But if we come down to our fifth wave and we have this fifth wave move down, we are likely to hit and go past 1.618, which essentially would allow us to look at this as a wave one, wave two, and wave three, up for four, down to five. And then, of course, we can wrap this up one, two, three, four, and then five. So you can see how there's a path to the downside across multiple time frames. And I don't want to kind of overcomplicate it, but for the most part, it looks more and more likely that we're going to move down into these lower ranges. Hopefully I'm wrong about that and we can move up and we can just kind of bounce around um, and kind of just have this as a very brief correction. Because it is possible that we can have um, some corrections, you know, just down in here a little ways. 
um, that basically are five ways of making a zigzag pattern, but it would be unusual for it to be um, a zigzag pattern on its own like this. Now, if we fail to cross the 1.618 and in fact do rally up a little ways, it would put us into the territory of a W, X, Y, X, and Z because we went down lower than the 1.382. So we have to bear in mind a couple of things here because it does mean that we'll still see further downside. It will just be under a different structure. So let's go up into the daily time frame and see if we can kind of uh, summarize this a little bit. OK, so we were and still are technically looking for this move to the upside on our daily time frame, right? This is actually still valid because we haven't broken the 1.308. However, I think we've got a lower chance and lower possibility of this now, considering this move to the downside has broken quite significantly. So let's go ahead and tidy out some of these ranges. I'm going to leave the yellow box at the top there, though, and just to kind of give us a reference as that's kind of where we were looking. Now, as you can kind of see... What we were looking at just a moment ago is a wave one, wave two coming down here a little bit deeper would be our wave three up for four and down into five. And of course, that would then be wrapped up with a wave one, wave two, wave three, four and five. Right. And so we'd see a new bear market low point. This would actually be a pretty decent thing to see because we can see over this side that we have a nice correction coming in. It would basically be a three, three, five overall. And we can kind of mark this as done and dusted. So, for example, a B and C. Okay, so not terribly too unusual or um, you know worrying in any way because we've been kind of talking about expecting some nice bear market low points for VeChain, uh, and you can see right here that we could be looking at 0 0.00884 through to about 1045. Right, so we know that there's this idea that we come on down a little bit deeper. Bear market is not yet done with VeChain's VET token, in my opinion. And that is a massive opportunity in itself, right? A little bit deeper allows you to kind of accumulate and all that kind of good stuff, okay? So we're hoping that we could have moved up here. We were hoping that we were done at this low point and we we're going to rally on up. This rally to the upside here would have been a double top and maybe we kind of got another correction coming down. But, you know, we stayed within the range, possibly just peaking down a little bit lower, right? Um, but ultimately, it kind of gives us a clear, clearish picture here on the daily time frame that actually we have further downside to go. Let's bring this up into our weekly time frame. You can actually see down here, I had this mapped out for quite some time at 0 0.00811 to 0 0.01065. And to reflect on where we were just measuring, it's 0 0.00884 to, 10, uh, to 0 0.01044, right? So we're right kind of like in that area. And then, of course, you know, when we zoom out of this, this is just a nice healthy correction that marries up nicely with the rally that we had previously. So for VeChain here, this isn't anything terribly too unusual. We've come down quite aggressively, I will agree. Um, but for the most part, it's actually pretty reasonable to kind of see how VeChain's price action has uh, has kind of pulled back and gives me encouragement for good accumulation. Now, this particular area of interest down here on our chart with our FIB scales also come in very nicely on our previous areas of resistance that would have been to turn into an area of support. OK, so we can see that back in uh, June of 2019, this was resistance. It was resistance in February 2020. We broke through it in August of 2020, coming down into October and November lows, back confirming this as a support level. All we're doing right now is coming back down to those same levels that were in my November of 2020. OK, and we saw very significant surge from this point uh, upwards. Right. And yet we haven't really even started this next bullish market. I suspect that we do have the potential to rally on up higher. Uh, the one to one based on our Fibonacci sequencing um, and our Elliott wave theory tells us 143. For that to happen, we'd have to see some pretty decent fundamental changes uh, with VeChain. So I don't know uh, what's going to cause that would be a catalyst for it. But we can see that there's potential here for a big rally upwards. I would say that we want to be looking at double top at 27.9 and um, the key areas for me really are going to be up there about 47 cent to 50 cent this area is going to be a psychological barrier for many but it's not really terribly too much harder to push it up a little bit further and um, so it'd be interesting to see if from a fundamental standpoint we can see uh, reasons and rationale to increase the demand for vet but also see a good reason and rationale to see the supply shrink like those are the two things that we need to see if we want to see price appreciation, right? We want to see the supply get locked up, total value lock grow for VeChain, for example, all the way through to an increase in demand for, you know, requiring VET. If we can see those two things, we're going to have a very successful bull market for VeChain. 
And there's a lot going on in the background that hopefully will be made public soon when it comes to VeChain as well. Um, some people complain it's been very quiet, but actually there's been a lot going on in the background. And uh, I think we're going to yeah, see what VeChain uh, can maybe come up with, maybe interview wise. Maybe we'll see uh, what can be done with that and see if we can get a few people from VeChain on the channel uh, to talk about some of the recent developments that have been going on uh, with their ecosystem. Because I think, I think it's going to be um, something very interesting for many people. Um, so I would say we'll come up into our data Zone, but I haven't yet managed to get any uh, on-chain data for VeChain. This is something that I am working on in the background. I do want to get it um, and we'll be able to include it within our data zone uh, within our membership website, right? So we have a membership website where we have uh, so many different things available for members, right? AMAs twice weekly, exclusive video content, exclusive technical analysis, all the way through to what the team are buying and selling, whale alerts, exchange listing alerts, um, all the way including, you know, trading and various different things going on around the trading areas, uh, the accumulation zones, these kind of things. And of course, data and on-chain data as well. Um, so on our on-chain data, we have at the moment Bitcoin, Ethereum, Cardano, XRP. I am looking to try to find a way to incorporate VeChain's VET token into this. So if anyone from VeChain is watching, I want to get some on-chain data and so that I can give it to, to the entire community so they can dive into the world of on-chain data for VeChain. So hit me up. Um, we'll see what we can do uh, for sure. I would say I'll jump into the news, but it's been a very slow news weekend for VeChain as well uh, across the board, not just VeChain, of course. Um, so we'll probably skip that area as well and just jump straight on over uh, into the world of exchanges where, you know, I was just saying earlier, it'd be great if BitGet would also list that on the spot exchange. I feel like this is video it's just become a, a bit of a complaints video. I want VeChain on chain data. I want BitGet to, to list VET on spot. Uh, look, I do 100% of my leverage trades on uh, on BitGet, right? And I can leverage trade VeChain through the BitGet platform, which is fantastic. I just would also like to be able to add VET to my um, my portfolio by the spot buys, right? And I can't do that with BitGet at the moment. So I end up doing about 90 to 95% of my spot purchases through BitGet. And for VeChain, I'm having to go elsewhere. Ultimately, though, I do think that BitGet will eventually list um, VeChain. And I think that would be fantastic to be able to go spot buys with uh, VET via the platform as well. If you haven't yet signed up to BitGet, why not check it out? Linked in the description down below. If you do use that link, you will be eligible for up to $8,000 of rewards uh, for depending on how much you deposit and trade on the platform. Now, I use many different exchanges and have done for years. Everything from Binance, uh, KuCoin, Gate.io, Coinbase, uh, Crypto.com, Bybit, for example, right? Just to name a few. And it's great because I have access to all of these platforms. I understand how they work. I understand how to deposit fiat, how to withdraw fiat, how to deposit crypto, how to withdraw crypto, if where I need to link my bank account, whether I need to do KYC. This is actually what sets you up for success in the future, because in a bull market, you do not know whether or not an exchange is actually going to be down, whether there's so much demand, too many people logging on all at once, trying to liquidate their, their assets, maybe that's VET. And um, well, you might not be able to log on, right? The platform might go down, not enough bandwidth and so forth. And so you have to have a backup. And the last thing you want to be doing is panicking, trying to set up a new account with a new exchange that you haven't looked at before. Do you need to do KYC? Is that going to be a delay in KYC considering a bull market? Chances are you probably will have a delay in that. And so you want to do these things now whilst the markets are slow, while there's uh, plenty of time to really go into the detail of it, learn how these platforms work. Set yourself up for success in the future by making sure you register with as many of these exchanges as you possibly possibly can. BitGet is my go-to platform and I think it can quickly become your go-to platform as well. Why not check it out using the link in the description below. Let's go ahead and jump down into the trade section of today's video which will be whether or not I think there's some trading opportunities. And I do think there's some trading opportunities here. Okay, so on our hourly chart, we're looking for this fifth wave move to the downside. Now, this is quite a challenge because at the moment, we do find ourselves in higher highs and higher lows. Ultimately, we have an overlapping corrective structure here, and it's not looking overly strong. But our momentum indicator is also telling us that there isn't really an appetite for selling right now. And so this is, means that we might push up a little bit higher, which means I won't want to short this market just yet. I think we're going to wait a little bit longer. Ultimately, uh, to keep our structure valid, we have to keep the price below 1.705 if we want to short the market. Looking at this, I think we'll have a short opportunity. Uh, it might just be a little bit higher in the price chart. So let's say we wanted to start a short around the 200 EMA, for example. We put that nice tight stop loss just above the wave uh, one swing low, uh, here being, let's say, 1.712. And we'll go ahead and 
drop down right into this low area with a nice risk reward ratio of 9.69. This is going to be obviously optimistic but something that I think is probably the best way of approaching the market right now. Now, this is just my thoughts and opinions. I'm obviously not a financial advisor. I cannot give you financial advice. It's just the way I would approach this one. Again, this will be a very significant drop from that 200 EMA down to that low will be about 15%. So low uh, leverage, you would not need high leverage, which would actually allow you to potentially open this up a little bit earlier, maybe at market value right now with maybe a 5x position. Uh, we would potentially see a little bit of a move up. You'd be negative for a while if you just wanted to open it right away, but you'd still be looking at about 12% move to the downside. The 5x is plenty of leverage on those kind of things. You would not need more than that in my humble opinion. You don't have crazy 100x positions. It's just not necessary. Build a trading portfolio actually is just about making sure that you have good risk management. You're not risking a huge amount of your portfolio to start with, and that you're using uh, you know, reasonable risk reward ratios that are going to net long term gains. Okay, if you had a risk reward ratio of 3.0 or higher, you could lose 70% of your trades and still be profitable, right? So it's understanding the risk reward ratio and how that imp isn't going to impact your trading uh, portfolio over the long term. But guys, I think that's going to wrap this video up right there. If you have found it useful and informative, smash that like button. I really do appreciate that. If you're new to the channel, subscribe. If you haven't yet joined us in Discord, what you're waiting for, check it out linked in the description down below. Until the next one, though, guys, have a fantastic day.